Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode three of Dropping the Topping. And today I have a special guest, the one, the only, Hani Jawari. And he, you know, is very well known within the community for being a, you know, excellent duelist. But also, like, um, behind the scenes, he's also, like, a really, really good deck builder for those of you who don't know. He actually built, like, multiple deck lists that won events. So, for example, if you look back to um, uh, Niagara, I think like two years ago, 2018, 2018 yeah, Gabe Vargas uh, took Connie's uh, list, which was Goki's at the time, and won the whole event with it. And yeah, first of all, shout out to Han Hani for giving me the list. And then in 2019, uh, Cody Angelov took Connie's list once again with, I think, Danger Thunder and won Nats. Yeah, um, I am your new North American national champion. <laughs> and what deck did you play? Uh, Hani's Thunder deck. As you saw. So I think Hani has like really, really good insight into deck building. And we're here today to kind of like, you know, pick his brain and learn a little bit more about, you know, how does he get to like these decks? Like how does he get to like, you know, create winning deck lists? Um, so Hani, um, today I have a special list for you. So this is the deck that I want you to like to kind of take a look at. But, um, but before we do all of that, uh, do you want to just introduce yourselves and also like kind of like shout yourself out? Yeah, so uh, if y'all don't know me by now, I'm Hani Jahari. Uh, I'm I was known as a duelist, but recently everybody knows me as the guy that hosts tournaments online. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I've been uh I've been working on a couple projects lately for uh, online tournaments and stuff. But yep. I am still a duelist, and I've been uh, dueling quite a lot. Yep. Fre frequently, at least, I've been uh, dueling in like team more stuff like that yep. even though there's real no events for me to play mm -hmm. uh i still try to keep up and uh see what's going on yeah like stay honing like your play. skills like you know keep up with the meta etc right yeah because uh when the game does come back i i do plan on playing and i don't want to be behind right. within the quarantine so i just try to keep up and play i don't really play in uh much online tournaments because i'm too busy hosting them and working on other things like yep. uh this new coaching series that i'd be i'm gonna be doing it's going to be me, Cody Langeloff, uh Shinurena, and uh, Kamal Crooks. Yeah, so we're very well-known players. Service. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, it's not going to be too crazy. You know, we're not trying to we're not trying to like compete with Duelist Academy. We just want to do something that can help the community and help people. You know, uh, learn what we know. You know, we want to yeah. help people like grow all together. Like, why wouldn't we want to share our knowledge with uh, other right. people in the game? Like, we're not going to play forever. Yeah. Uh, I don't think, you know, everyone plays forever, but why wouldn't we pass this down to other people that do right. want to play yeah. and have and, the time? You know? And effectively create, like, a new generation of, like, really strong, like, duelists as well. And I think that's really, really neat to have, like, you know, more people, more competitive duelists, right, with, like, very high, like, track records. Kind of, like, walk us through, like, their mindset, like, about, you know, how they become, like, YCS champions, national champions, etc. because, you know, the, the the people that, that Hani listed, right, have multiple rings, like, combined, man, like, so that that's, like, super, super, like, stacked team, and I'm really, really excited to see what they uh, come out with, but we're gonna get a taste of that right here with Hani kind of, like, uh, coaching me, pretty much, right, like, through deck building, and also, like, to um, just, yeah, just to, like, learn and improve. So, I mean, without further ado, uh, we'll get started with this water deck profile. So, this is, like, um, a deck that I've been trying to play, Hani. Um, it's what I've been, like, taking to online events. I, I like, like, Ad Emancipators. Like, don't get me wrong, the deck is really strong as well. Like, I like Elric. I think there's a really strong deck. But I'm, I'm one of those players that just kind of want to play something different than what everyone else is. Like, there's nothing wrong with the, the meta decks for sure. But so that's kind of, like my approach but i wanted to create something that's also competitive right like i'm not trying to play like like some rogue deck that just goes x10 <laughs> like that's not my goal like i'm still trying to like take a semi rogue deck but also like do really really well with it so yep. so the water deck uh i've actually been taking a look at the deck a lot recently i was mm -hmm. actually playing with it a lot i'm not yep. gonna lie like i've been i've been i've been working on uh, a water list myself yeah and uh I definitely did take inspiration from your list when you won the PP, uh, or not one, I think you top, top four. Top four, top four, yeah. PPG, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, I took, you know, I, I took inspiration from uh, your list to begin with. I think you and Jesse worked on it. Yeah. But 
Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things I changed actually. Sure. And, uh, I'm gonna go through those like yeah, pretty much right now. So uh, yep. For hand traps, uh, you play Ash and Nibiru, and I think that's like one big difference between our list. I yep. feel like uh, impermanence Nibiru are uh, like actually it, it depends on the tournament. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you think you're gonna verse a lot of Eldritch, and yep. you think you're gonna verse a lot of like slow non-combo decks then yep. i think ash and nibiru should be the hand traps that you play yeah but if you think you're gonna go into a tournament where you're gonna verse a lot of combo yep you should be playing cards like impermanence nibiru because yep. impermanence works under uh guardian yeah and it works and it's just and it, and it works during your turn and your opponent yeah turn. so if you top deck for turn really you can like just imperm their vfd for example yeah yeah 100 so like when so, you decide like the hand trap lineup you, you kind of like mentioned that it kind of depends what you're expecting to meet a lot of within the tournament like is there a specific way like you kind of determine that like i know previously yeah. like yeah yeah just just yeah let me know yeah for sure so like the way you determine what you think the meta is going to be all right first number one thing the last tournament yeah so let's say this week the ppg what won eldage that yep. won this tournament this week cam neil yep take take imperm Turn him to ashes because yeah. you know you're gonna be versing, and honestly, you look at the whole entire top tier. Don't just look at the deck that won because it's not that important what won. It's yeah. it, it, like it's important the whole entire tournament. Yeah. And the whole entire tournament was what dinos. There was what a Medolce, I believe. It yeah. was It was Eldritch yep. and Salads, like decks like those, and and Imperm. You can tell it's not very like it's not insanely strong against those. Yeah. So you would probably just play Ash Boss, but if, yep. let's say all Emancipator top or four, oh god, no. five yeah. Emancipator tops, yeah, then you got to play Imperm and you got to play Nimbir. One hundred percent. Yeah, you got no other option. You I have think. To be here for combo. Yeah, what you mentioned was actually like it's kind of clicking with me right now because when I think back to the week before, the, like this past this uh, not this past weekend but the weekend before, Salomon Grades won, right? So and then today. Like or like essentially like top cut, you find out that two Salmon Grits made top cut and there's a higher representation of Salmon Grits now ever since Gabriel won yep. the PBG the last yep. weekend. So yeah, no, I definitely agree with what with what you're saying. There's a lot of people who kind of like just follow like winning deck lists. They kinda of like just net deck it, take it to events and see how they kind of yeah, perform with it. Yep. And uh even when Ryan won the next week at least got what second with the striker deck? Yeah, she like, did. Yeah. Yeah. Like come on like you, you gotta you gotta you gotta just pay attention on what's going on yeah what wins one tops and yep. you gotta build your deck to, towards those decks yeah and sometimes it's not gonna work out it's not gonna always work out you yep. get unlucky you, ver you verse the decks that you didn't expect yeah but it's whatever you use you use the you use the statistics like you, yeah. you used what people were playing last week. right you used, right right you use what people were playing last week. like That's you use play, like you i guess base your decision off logic and decision making kind of like just putting in random hand traps there's like uh, you know, there's explanation behind why you play XYZ cards in your deck, in your main deck, right? Like, you kind of have to imagine, like, if you were to do a deck profile of, you know, for example, what I have shown here, can you explain everything and why you're playing XYZ card? Yeah, makes sense, man. All right. Yep, and uh, that's pretty much it for the hand traps. Okay. So, would you, what what number do you recommend for a deck like this? Like, the, the right, the, because I'm sure a lot of people in the comment section will be asking, like, right, like, how many hand traps should I play? I I prefer six. Yep. Or or more. I don't think you should go less. Okay. In this format. Gotcha. So it's yep. always six or more. Yep. I prefer six. I think that's always a good number. Yeah. Because you don't want a brick. Yeah. That's the main thing. You just don't want a brick. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> always six or more. Yeah, like, I'm never trying to brick. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just laughing that you said that because yo, I think I. I I'm like the brick god, man. I brick so much. <laughs> it's like dual book is just like rigged against me. But that's another story, guys. Um, yep. anyway, anyways, um, so I guess let's go into like kind of like the, the main deck, right? Yeah. So what what are your thoughts so far like as what you like see here? All right. So um, the one thing I would change yep. in your list. Yep. All right. There's actually a couple cards. The first one is infantry. Okay. So... Let's talk about infantry. So infantry is a really good card. Yep. I, I think I think the extra normal effect. Yeah. It's it's decent, but it's not it's not insane. Like yeah. the fact that it's a non tuner and it only really works with diva. It's really it really like just rarely works with the other ones. And yeah. I, you're right. And it, honestly, it's just 
I don't know. The the effect is is sort of relevant. The effect to pop one, but yeah. I believe it should be a one of. Yeah, yeah. And I believe you should be playing a card, and it's not in your deck, but it's uh. Atlantean oh, Marksman. Oh, so, Marksman. Yeah, so I actually was going to side it as a one of in my side deck just because it's for utility. But yeah, I, I can see that. Just because I guess if you can yeah. like attack and swing over it, you'll like uh, get a free special. So I'll, I'll cut down right now uh, the Hiven Tree to one. I also agreed with you that the effect is only ever relevant if you have Diva in hand as well. And like if you had to go normal infantry, normal minstrel to go off, it's like you're using two cards for like hopefully noodle fiber resolving which is like so unlikely this format yeah so for sure definitely play a marksman and yep. you would actually be surprised how often the marksman effect comes up in this format yeah but it always it like honestly with nimbiru if you open marksman it's literally just like opening up neptimus because usually when you nimbiru like the eldritch deck they usually yep. have like tokens and yep. stuff so you could attack over it with the nimbiru and you could attack them directly with the marksman yep and it could and you could summon uh neptimus neptimus yeah and go off relevant. <laughs> yeah so uh so yeah it's actually pretty relevant it's the, the fact that it's level three is also relevant yep uh you know not that many people would know that but yeah it's it's really it's really important because yep. you could summon it off the neptimus from yep. the grave mm -hmm. and you could use marksman and coral dragon to make a nine and then you could use the extra level three token on your field yep with uh with the uh lapis dragon yeah to make a savage so you can end up oh. doing PFD savage sometimes right with hands because you got to recognize that there's cards like okay so there's a card in the deck it's called uh you know croco dragon i'm yeah. pretty sure yeah, uh, yeah. everyone should know what this card does <laughs> yeah but it discards discards two to destroy yep. a card on field yeah so in some hands, you could discard cards like, you could discard cards like Neptibus, and you could discard cards like Dragoons. Yep. You could pop a card. Neptibus can reborn like a marksman from the grave. Yep. And you could add Lapis Dragon from the deck to the hand and summon it, and then that's how you make the Savage. Plus right. Go. Yeah. So, no, that's so going insane. Second, yeah, going second when you're breaking the field, you're always trying to, you know, reestablish your own board. So yep. I always try to push for that. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it actually has way more utility than I initially thought because my, my only thought about siding Marksman was against, like, the back row decks. I wanted that versatility to, like, search Marksman and then just, like, bait out a back row, forcing them to activate it and then infantrying it. Um, but I actually agreed with that. The fact that the level 3 does actually come up a lot because um, I, I do the Lapis play a lot. Like, especially, like, Neptibus is uh, it's a one-card uh, Coral Dragon. So um, that's, like, yeah, so it actually does come up. That makes sense for me interesting yeah okay cool 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 so yeah uh now for the rest of the list yep pretty much everything looks good here but there's only a couple changes that i've made yeah personally and i've actually ended up playing two lapis dragons oh now yeah. now this is actually kind of crazy because people are like oh this card's a brick you're, there's just no way you're playing two of this there's yeah. no way you're playing two of this but honestly it's one of those cards if you open it you really do want it you really do want another one <laughs> yeah you do yeah because like it really it, like if you open lapis with with like neptibus oh my like god it ruins the play it yeah literally ruins the play you have to play two two of those yeah just for those hands and there's so many copies of neptibus yeah and there's so many copies of diva in the yep. deck that the fact that like if you open the the lapis and it could sometimes cut off your turn with like neptibus it's not yeah. it's not very good so yeah I i've agree. been playing two i personally have no issue playing two because Honestly, the deck is just, it can combo so much, so often. Yeah. And I, I, and I feel like in my list, it combos more, uh, for one reason. And I think that you should be playing this card. Oh and, God. Uh, what is the spice? It, it, it's the card that everyone's playing this format. It's tuning. We it's need to tuning. be playing tuning okay. in every single deck. I yep. feel in this format. All right. Gotcha. Now the reason why I say you should be playing tuning in this deck and specifically this deck yep. is because your deck is a. It, it, it's a one card comp like you already play link rebo in the deck yeah jet is a good card to summon off a of fiber yeah you, you play multiple fibers in the deck so you really need more machines think about it you play two aurordon yeah and you play two and you play uh two fiber so two you fiber, don't even yeah. have it like after you went through the first aurordon you yeah. don't even have any more uh any more machines to like summon off of your uh yeah. your guys you would have to summon your other o-line th yep. that means you can't even use your aurordon that turn yeah so oh it's yeah really important it's really important to be playing uh, Jet yep. Synchron. So you you would uh, you would uh, say that the target for tuning would that be Quick Draw uh, Synchron or Jet? Like 
Cause uh, both actually. Both to so one and one. I would play. Well, I like. I've been going back and forth. Right now, we could do like one jet, one quick draw, but yep. uh, it might it might be two jet by the end. Okay. Of this. So. Gotcha. I wanted to get yeah, your thoughts yeah. on Aria be, or I think Aria because I was actually looking into like innovating this list as well with where you play three tuning and three Aria. Three it's, Aria. Yeah. yeah. That's, so the, that's that's what I was about to get into next. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So ex Aria. explain explain to me what your thoughts are, and then I'll, I'll explain mine for sure. Yeah. So in this version of the deck, yep, Arya is insane. Oh so yeah. There's actually multiple reasons why Arya is insane. Yep. But let's go through like some of them. So sure. tuning, first it mills the top card of your deck. If you mill water, you can search off at Arya. Yeah. It literally becomes live. Yeah. Second, you play quick. Uh, you play quick draw. You can yep. special quick draw. Discard one. Discard of water. Search right away. Yeah, exactly. Yep. No, so, so you grab jet. Yep. Summon jet. Make link Karibo. Link. Uh, you go jet. Pitch any water out your out your hand. Yep. Special summon it. Play Aria. You could add Minestrel. Rip the last hand trap by pitching another water. Then make like, noodle fiber. Yeah. Yeah. So. Aria is insane. Aria is really good. Yeah, yeah no, Aria is actually really insane. So that was kind of like the logic I had too. I know I told everyone before that oh, Aria is just terrible, but it was terrible for what my list was trying to accomplish. And so like we had to find ways to innovate Aria so that it's actually good, right? Because don't get me wrong, this card is insane. The fact that you can search out your entire deck, right? It searches, it searches you with the missing dragoons, it searches you the minstrel, it searches you Neptibus, Diva, Marksman, whatever. Like whatever you're looking for, it gets it to your hand right and but the biggest problem with this deck was there was no way for you to get a water in the grave that didn't commit your normal summon or so like the role of Arya was not it wasn't a starter and it wasn't an extender so but now i think that when we incorporate tuning into the deck you can like get like you can like easily go search quick draw quick draw dump water and then activate Arya. so if and then you'll say you go with diva normal summon diva if they hand trap you there you can make noodle fiber with the quick draw and the diva so it just becomes they need to have multiple hand traps to like play through your board um that you're trying to make so yeah i, d I definitely agree Arya is nice yep so in my list yep uh i don't play mid breaker for the fact that i play impermanence at three okay but based off the fact of this weekend let's say we're trying to build towards next weekend yep let's say we play three ash Yep. And we keep the mid breaker, but you definitely have to cut the impermanence because it does conflict with mid breaker. It does, yeah. I so, think it, I had that came up to me a couple of times, like when I did play. I would, I drew like so much within the combo that I would actually like have. I drew, I would draw into like the imperm and like the ashes, and yeah, that imperm like was just so like dead because I just had it set and I just couldn't activate it because mid breaker field mid would breaker. shut off my imperm too. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. Midbreaker in this deck is kind of weird because you do play cards like Coral and you do play cards like uh, Crocosaur and Vermilion. Honestly, yeah. uh, I I think as a whole, I would probably just cut the Midbreaker. Just field. cut the Midbreaker? Yep. Yeah. I, I just think Call by the Grave is enough and Minestrel is enough. Like, Midbreaker actually just doesn't even come up with it as much as you would think it would in right. this deck. That's okay. pretty crazy. Yeah. That's just insane. Yeah, because so. Minstrel just gets you whatever the hand trap that you need, anyways, and then you already have the Call buys. Okay. And then, okay, man, the, the most debated topic, man. A pot of average so what are your thoughts on this um you know like i, I right. i'm a big advocate for this card but like i want to hear your thoughts on it all right so me personally i'm not playing it and honestly i'm not gonna lie i do see why they do play it in this deck mm -hmm. it's actually crazy but this deck really needs to recycle like <laughs> would it be a time yeah. to, to like get another turn yeah but there's a there's an easy way to solve this issue yep and that is and the way to solve the issue of like killing on the following turn because this deck puts a bfd quite easily yep. and honestly after you put up bfd all you need to do is ended up killing your opponent and yep. uh the main way i've been doing that is with uh access code talker one of the best link monsters printed in okay. my opinion it's, yeah it's effects just insane so yep. uh me personally i haven't been playing uh pot of avarice yep for for that reason yep so yeah, I definitely think you should be uh, you should uh, cut that card from your deck. Yeah. So. No, yeah, I I agree because I the only reason why I play it is I've noticed that like turn one like I set up the full board, and so it's like Moon Glacier VFD and like bunch of like hand traps and like uh f like five six cards in hand. But then the problem was the following turn I I wouldn't have the Diva or I wouldn't have like the Neptibus right. So I would just like I I just have those two monsters and they would set, they would go T set. Right, because under VFD they're not really doing much, 
and the the problem was I just couldn't I just wasn't able to like put game out on board to get enough monsters. But I think with Arya it will like search me my follow up, and then I can just like go for go for game. Cause like Arya like Diva resolving is just like pretty much access code. Yep. So okay, this yep. makes sense. So uh, yeah, now uh, the other thing I've uh, I've been uh, testing with is I'm playing two Teus because yep. if you're not playing the Toad and the Bahamut, it's really just not. It's just not that crazy. Yeah. It's not that crazy as yep. you would think it would be, and the fact that you have cards like Quick Draw yep. that also require cards to discard, you're not gonna have a big enough hand sometimes. Yeah, I so agree. That's, so I'll cut out Pike lot. and I'll cut out Teus because Pike is search off Teus. Like, um, or like, what are your thoughts? Playing, I've been playing. I've been playing like uh, two Teus, uh, one Pike. Oh, one Pike. And okay. I, yeah, because you still want the card to search off of him. And yep. like Pike is not the worst. The fact that it could search Ministral in some hands is yeah. really good. Yep. True. And it, Ministral dragoons, and you know, you could you could do things from there. So yeah, uh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it, it's really important the, yep. to play that card because instead of like because before it would go you would go like summon Teus, pitch the dragoons the dragoons would add uh would add Neptibus then you would summon Pike pitch the Neptibus add the Ministral you know stuff like that yep but but it, it's just it's just not as good as it used to be I think the fact that it's just uh too much cards in your extra deck yeah you, you could do other things with Teus you could just like search Lapis with the dragoons and then you could mm. you could just make a fiber without using your normal stuff like that yep you could do or you could go uh search for uh search for diva summon diva you're forced to, they're forced to hand trap it then you can make fiber you know like you you really just honestly playing the uh the, the ta like playing the uh playing the Bahamut and stuff is just not needed. So yeah. Bahamut and Toad, I would never like. I, I honestly, like, I was playing it for so long. Yep. So yeah. long. Yeah, I I cut it too because in testing, I noticed the same things you were. So for the problem with Toad is, in order to resolve Toad without normal summoning, it means that you have to open up two additional water monsters with Toad plus a normal summon, right? So you have to open up Diva, and two water monsters so you can uh make the t uh, totally without normal summoning, and then you would go normal Diva, and, and then you would have totally, but. If you do that line of play with, if you just do the quick math, right? You have five cards in hand. You summon totally twice, uh, di by discarding two cards from your hand. So you have two cards left in your hand. One of them has to be a diva. So if you go normal summon diva on totally, that means that you have one card in hand. And if they have like, I don't know, double imperm or something, you just lose. So it's yeah, it's just it's just tough. I I, I agree with you on the toads for sure. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So. Uh yeah, for the rest of the deck, I see that uh, it's it's 42 currently. Yep. But I, me personally, I don't play Monster Reborn because mm, okay. it, the fact like I don't know, like the, it just really never really came up for me. There was never a card that yep. I felt like I needed a Monster Reborn for my my opponent's grave or my grave. So yeah. I was just like, I want to make sure my deck's more consistent. It's a more playable card. Right. And right, make right. sure my deck is 40 cards. Okay, yeah, no, 100%. So, okay, let's say we take Monster Reborn out. Because, yeah, my initial thought with Monster Reborn was always, if I ever get hand-trapped on, let's say, Neptibus, like, I can always, you can, like... You get yeah. Monster Reborn. Monster Reborn, yeah, they're hand-trapped, yeah. That's what I was doing for, like, yep. the most part. Yep. But then, like, there's cards like Imperm and Biru, and it's That's just true. like, dude, this Monster Reborn... It's kind of like dead. Anything <laughs> card, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, I and, agree like, with that, and, yeah. Like, those are like the main ones of this format. Like the yep. only time you'd actually resolve like Monster Reborn for like yep. Ash or Valor. Yep. It's actually just like against like Eldritch. So there's not really many decks that are playing like Ash Valor just in the main. Like that, that makes sense. You know? That makes sense. Yeah. So, and I think I think Call By is already like enough as like a very strong offensive and defensive card. Yes. So yeah. And you just yeah you just don't want to break. Like, yeah. That's, that's like the main focus here. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to break and uh. And, then, and yeah, for that reason, that's I, I play two Aria instead of three because the okay. cards are hard once per turn, and if you open like multiples with yep. no way to put a water engrave, yep. you could actually brick on it. So that's true. Yeah. I think now that yeah. is my uh, current forty card. Oh like, wow, nice water. I actually, honestly, your reasoning for two Aria kind of makes sense to me because if you really think about it, right, like 
it's basically like because the role of diva now is essentially an additional starter right so like to not break and it synergizes well with like the tunings and like one for ones and the minstrels etc so it basically serves as additional copies of diva and cop extra copies of neptibus and i mean if you just look at it we have like three diva three neptibus we have dragoons that stumped off by either minstrel or Taeus will get us these cards as well plus aria it's just like i think we if we, if we were to play like let's say three it wouldn't add that much more consistency it would just be like diminishing returns i believe so yeah it makes sense for me to play too cool cool yep. all right so i guess like the next part within like the whole deck building process is figuring out like the side deck for like you know the meta game right like so like walk me through how like you would create a side deck for the water deck in in this current meta right so i'll just clean everything right. out i'll just clean everything out and then we'll kind of like just like i guess talk through it yep so all I right so for the side uh main thing i think that i i can't stress enough there should be these exact eight cards in your side right now okay it's red reboot three lightning storm three twin twister and panker tops okay now i stress these the most because when you're really walking into an event yep majority of the player base is playing traps <laughs> like, <laughs> like no one yeah. like like you're rarely going into an event where you're versing like insane amount of combos yeah you're, you're versing a lot of trap and yeah second that's really just majority of the meta right now that's true yeah. and and lately people honestly in this format people have been playing a lot of floodgates i don't know if y'all been like <laughs> watching yeah or seeing the floodgates that people have been playing yeah but people are playing goes in now yeah people are oh playing mystic mine yeah everybody's been playing there can only one be one they, yeah. they just added two more yeah and i uh, yeah twin twister that, is so like necessary no i yeah, lost it's, it's my really game good. against gabe susie because he nabeared me then flipped goes in match <laughs> while i was playing water and i had lightning storm in my hand but i could, if that lightning storm was a twin twister I would have won that game so quick because I had like Diva, Minstrel. I was ready to go off. But like he kind of beard him and I got punished for it because he had Ghost in Match. And I was like, I was like, what? This is crazy. Yeah. But I definitely been yeah. like seeing like more and more floodgates being introduced into the meta. Just like kind of keep up like for sure. Like Guru, the master of like, you know what I mean? Like just so many floodgates in the deck. Just crazy. Yep. Yep. So, so, so this, these eight cards make reason. sense. Yeah. Uh, for the rest of the side. Yep. So I stress this the most. Mm -hmm. So the most important hand trap in this format is Nibiru. Right. So I'm trying to see Nibiru every hand, and the way you see that is uh, if you play three copies of Phantasme. Oh. Okay. Me personally, I think Phantasme is really good against almost every deck this format yeah and i i just think that that you need to play cards like phantasma right with like with like all these decks going around because nibiru is just that like bad of an imp like impactful card yeah so, like uh, even like against like eldritch you could side in phantasma yep. try to get nibiru against like the combo version yep. and then like you would side in the twin twisters or side in cosmic or side in uh like like you don't want to side in lightning storm when you side in the phantasmes and the yep. mirrors because yep. that means you have six conflicting cards yep but like when you're versing combo it shouldn't matter you should always just put in like phantasme and yeah and like as many hand traps as possible yep. to be honest i also found so, like yeah. that twin twister has really good synergy with aria as well so like you can like dump a water for twin twister and then just go off with aria so that's like really insane just realize that is there yeah. a reason why you yeah. play twin over cosmic yeah, and this deck specifically because yep. of uh, yeah Aria. Okay, really. gotcha, like, gotcha. You could you could search off of Aria and then uh, Twin also just like I don't know. There's just like when you're versing decks like Striker, you, you kind of need to like hit a back row and hit the mine or yeah uh, against like against like uh, the Salad deck. Like there's like always like a Rage or something, so you can yep. hit the Rage and the goes in. Yeah. It, 
or in perms and stuff like it, it just seems it seems more safe yeah like and the also, extra like, card you could yeah. onto it later on the tournament, so. okay that I makes think, sense to me yeah. yeah to be honest i do agree that the extra pop or the extra destruction actually comes up so much like right you you said for example salamander it's like they're usually set two to three right and it's either roar or raise like twin twister just baits it like you know like baits out the roar instantly instead of you having to like kind of like go guessing game on that and so like you just have a higher chance of hitting like their important back row so that makes sense and even like i, I guess the logic with twin too is like if you twin twister like for example the elec board yes they can recur their resources at end phase but the game plan is like after you twin them you're killing them so there's no like turn three it's like you know like it's my turn and we're gonna like try to figure out a way to like just kill you so i i think i can understand like the logic behind twin then um okay cool so we have four cards left in the side deck man so so uh what do you recommend here <clears throat> I recommend Triple Valor, even though there's no impermanence in this deck. Yep. The fact that you play Phantasme in the side. Yep. I I really think you you should be playing Valor over it for that for that reason, for that especially reason. for maining act. So yeah. You definitely play three Valor, and then the yep. last card, it, it it's like a decision between Token Collector. Okay. Or Lancia. It has to be one of the one of the two. Um, yep. If I'm trying to play three Valor. I'm trying to play three Phantasma. I'm trying to play the exact same ratio of cards right now. Yeah. So, the, like that last slot's always different depending on what you think you're gonna see more. Yeah. Uh, if you think it's gonna be like Eldritch, like a lot of like combo Eldritch. Yeah. Token Collector, because you could draw it off of Phantasma. Yeah. And it, you can clear all the tokens. That's crazy. You Start off your turn with two uh, monsters. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually insane. And like yeah. that can come up a lot. Like you can go. Phantasma, Chain and Biru, like yeah. it comes up a lot where you can get two monsters on field. Yep. Or Lancia, if you think there's gonna be like a lot of Dino or yeah. or a lot of like uh invoke. Yeah. Stuff like that. So, so the last yeah, card is like that flex spot. Okay. Gotcha. So yeah. Uh but right now I would probably just say like maybe token collector. It seems really good. Because, yeah. Like, especially since it's a recurrable one. Like it recurs. Yep. So Yeah, that it, makes sense. Really good. Yeah, I was thinking leading towards Lancia just because man. I hate playing against Dino plays, bro. They always draw like the most insane cards, and it's like it's that Dino DNA, I guess, man. <laughs> it's always like Ovi Raptor, Lost World, and like five hand traps. So I'm just like Jesus, but yep. yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, sounds good. Token Collector makes sense. So the extra deck. Yeah, so so extra deck. Your extra deck is exactly uh, pretty much they're they're in this deck. The, yep. the extra deck should be the same except for two cards. Okay. And the two cards are the the water charmer and okay. the phoenix in your deck those okay. are the two cards yep. that are flex spots those They're flex be spots, any yeah. two cards yep. that you want to play me personally i'm starting to think i want to play all mirage in the deck and the fact that i want to play all mirage because it works with diva works with map the best and yep. and also just works with aria like yeah you know when you go nap the best or you, let's say you go diva you go diva effect they go like ash and perm whatever you can yep. you can turn that into an all mirage when that turns into all mirage you can play aria you could search for like minestrel if you have dragoons or you could search yep. for dragoons if you have minestrel yeah and then you could like use minestrel rip a card out the hand add a lapis and there's just no way like the only way you would ever get to <laughs> that three hand traps yeah exactly traps. wait that's so, actually just insane like that line of play that you just mentioned is actually insane that means yeah, that like so, aria serves as like an extender almost now because it yeah. can get you that lapis dragon because it searches you the misting dragoons or the missing minstrel so yeah, as it, long as you yeah. have a way to discard it organically with Teus or minstrel um which you have like there's five water yeah, discards now you have, a way, to lapis. Now you have yep. a way to lapis okay yo that's actually insane so would you yeah. cut the area or the nightmare phoenix honestly it's just hard it's hard yeah uh, I'd probably probably the i'd probably keep the phoenix with all the floodgates I'd keep yeah the phoenix in the extra okay the water charmer and play yeah. so and then you're gonna say yeah. something about like um about like uh aria as well or yeah aria can only search uh level four or lower or lower i know so, i know yeah, so. if it could if it could search lapis oh my god it'd be wild but i don't think yeah. lapis would trigger anyways right or no it would trigger because you it can would. It would. yeah because you can draw yeah. lapis for turn and then trigger lapis right away. i've done that before going second which was like always insane Oh, that's crazy. I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah. If you draw it for, for turn, you can actually trigger Lapis Dragon. But if yeah, if, you, it's, if, if it's in your opening five hand, it doesn't count. But if it's if you draw it as your six cards, you can actually activate Lapis it's, in your draw, draw phase. It's good with Phantasma, at least, too. Like, you could yeah. draw Phantasma. Oh, my yeah. God. Yo, you're right. 
You can so, actually yeah, draw it off Phantasmia and then you start off your turn with Noodle Fiber. That's just insane. Yeah, yeah it's just Needle Fiber on its own. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. That's just so, insane. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty much my uh, my take on the water deck. Okay. Uh, I I think this list is just honestly, it's it's just really good. The the, yeah. the amount of hand traps that you could play through. I'm telling you, man. Like, after you try this list, it, you're gonna be amazed. Like every time yeah. you go first, you should combo. Like, there's never a time where I went first. Yeah. And like, uh, I didn't combo. Honestly, yeah. that's the reason why I play cards like double lapis and stuff. Yep. Like, because the combo just happens so often that I don't even care if I play two. Yeah. And, Honestly, in in a regular event, uh, I, honestly, I would consider playing one. But like, man, every time I play on DB, bro, the one yeah. up just flew. <laughs> it's scuffed. Yeah, yeah, it's scuffed. It's scuffed. It's yeah. scuffed. And so it's I weird. guess it's so weird. Yeah, I I wanted to get your take on that too, man. So because we're in an online format, and you've been like a you know a very well established player within like real like real physical cards, right? Like in the actual like Yu Gi Oh space. Like, what is like the biggest difference for you between? playing online and then playing in real life like is there anything i should like uh pay attention to or take notice notice of so that i can like kind of i guess improve like is there like a difference for you that you notice man uh i think playing in like when you're playing at your own home yeah you're just honestly you're just more comfortable yeah and sometimes you could be distracted and it, mm, it, it seems yeah. crazy it seems crazy to think that, yep. but honestly, it's the honest truth. You're, you're yep. honestly more likely to mess up when you're at, like in your own home because the fact that if you're not paying your full on attention to the game, yeah, like it can cost you, you know. So like, yeah. you just need to make sure you're always focused on your game, yeah, and and just always just pay like just just be paying attention like that. And the number one thing about like playing online, yep, that's like that's more that's just more rewarding i feel like you, you just can never get cheated when you're playing yeah. when you're playing online like right you could really ne like you could really never get cheated like everything is in the log everything is there like yep. you, you could never really just get like savaged by your opponent and that's like <laughs> huge yeah and that's just like huge so like, yep. there's you shouldn't feel stressed you shouldn't feel worried mm -hmm. and i know like sometimes when there's a lot of watchers like the nerves and all that stuff but yeah. Honestly, you just gotta remember you're literally playing a card game. You, yep. you, you're, you'll be fine. It's not like it's gonna affect you in any way. Like, yeah. Just play. Just stay confident. Make sure you're focused. Yeah. Make sure you think your plays through. Don't, oh, no. like, doing don't doing rush yourself. Through. Even if your opponent's rushing you, sometimes you just, if you need to think, you need to think. Just think. right, 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 right. Yeah. And I guess like, um, before we like, you know, conclude this entire like, you know, deck building series, I guess I wanted to ask you about. What are some big tech takeaways you think that the Yu-Gi-Oh community and the player base should take away from in terms of like, like trying to improve? Like, what do you think like is the best starting point for for people? Like, do you think they should focus on deck building, uh, focus on in-game decision making? Like, uh, what what is what are your thoughts on that? Or maybe something else that I haven't even mentioned. All right. So, when you're when you're getting into the game and you really want to improve as a player. Yep. The first thing you want to do is you want to play. You want to play a deck, and you want to learn that deck. Like you really just want to sit there and you want to learn that deck. Yep. Until you know what it does. Like I'm yeah. trying to play every single deck in the in the current game. I know I, I know what Eldex does. I know what every I, I basically yeah. know what every single deck <laughs> in this game does. Yeah. Because I played every single one of them. Yeah. Played every single one of them. Yep. Because. If you're not playing these cards, then yeah. you're, when you're versing them in an event and you don't know what they do, first, yep. it kills time. You have to read your opponent's card. Yeah. That kills time. That's the number one thing. You're already killing time yep. reading your opponent's card. You're already, yep. like, oh, increasing the chances of you going into time or increasing, like, like, major, like you're increasing more ways to, to lose, right. basically. Because if, if you ever get into time and your opponent ends up scumming you and you're, <laughs> honestly, and then you don't know what his cards did, yeah. Begin with, it's like it's like you're to blame. Like every yeah. time you adverse like a deck like Prank Kid, and you don't even know what that deck does. Yep. And that and that guy just gains one thousand and gains three <laughs> because you got to read all his game cards, game one and two. Yeah. It's your fault, bro, because you just didn't know what what the what his cards did. Yeah. He was able to take advantage of the situation. Yeah. So wow. you always gotta know what every single card does. Like every yeah. single, I I, I stress that the most. You, right. You should just know the card pool. Yeah. You should play. You don't even need to know the whole entire card pool. You yep. just need to 
look at every deck that everyone has played in yep. the last cut like in the last month yep and then just learn those decks so like yeah right now the only decks that you need to know in this format this might seem like a lot but to me this is little yep. you need to learn eldritch yep. water you need to learn eldritch water rock it's what salad striker even Madolce, yep. people wouldn't even yeah, know what Madolce right did. <laughs> you learn what invoke cards. You yep. learn what mechanic cards do. Yep. You basically need to know what all those all those decks do. Right. If you, if you want to play in this current meta right now, yeah. Just read those cards because if you don't know what any of those cards do, then you're just yeah. Like, you get I punished. Yeah, you get punished so easily, and I think that's something that I want to like stress to all of you too. And you, you guys see me as I like literally, I play every deck, man. Like I played Adamant Spears, I played Elric, playing Water right now. Like I played the Dino, I've tested that. Like I think that's like one of the biggest takeaways that I felt like I got to improve as a player. Is like I literally played every single deck that's relevant within the meta, rogue or not. Like if it's literally if some rogue deck wins an event like Grand Maju, bro, God knows I'm gonna take that deck and learn how to play it. You know really well, even though sometimes it's like pretty much <laughs> you know banish yeah. 10 normal summon as soon as you top with water as soon yep. as you top with water yep i decided to build water and i decided to test it okay. exactly so i decided that... to re, yep. re look at the deck yep and that's like a re perfect example it. like you know like honey like you know like is a perfect example of how like what he's telling us right now is literally what he's doing too it's not like he's just kind of like saying it like he literally did like right after i top with water my man went to work in the lab man and he he created a list that i think it's even more consistent and even like i think better right and that's that's the beauty of like this game like the deck building constantly evolves like the game gets you know very interesting so you know 100 percent man honey thank you so much man for coming on today um so honey i want to give you the chance to promote yourself again let people know about your uh the coaching um you know uh, project that you're working on so uh, if you want to talk about that again <clears throat> yes yeah, so uh yeah, first I want to shout out uh, my sponsor Nicholas John. Of course, literally the goat. Uh, make sure you check out our Facebook page. Yep, that's that's uh, pretty important. Luxury gaming tournaments. That's uh, that's what it's called. And <clears throat> make sure you like our our Facebook group, Luxury yeah. Gaming. Uh, those are the main things. If you really want to improve in the game i really do think you all should check out the luxury gaming tournament i really can't yep. stress this enough this yeah. is literally how i became good at the game i'm yeah. not gonna lie i'm from louisiana wow. i basically <laughs> sat at my house and i played on my laptop yeah on dueling book yeah until i got insane at the game and honestly the, the results for me it, it was so fast because yeah. i was able to learn the whole entire card pool yeah because it's all right there yeah when you want to test you literally have uh, of like a room full of people <laughs> yeah. wanting to play yeah that's like that's why i try to stress that the most yeah 100 when you really feel like you're comfortable and you, you think you, you think you could you could win and you could do well in tournaments yep. the first thing that you should do is enter an online tournament play your deck yep. test it out see if it's good enough like I don't understand how people can go into an event and not test their deck at least once. Like, right. play a, play an online tournament. Play yeah. an online tournament. Right. Like, it's not that you know, like yep. you're going to a YCS or you're about to play an LCS. Play an online tournament. Who? What? Like, there's no better place to play. Right. At. Like, yeah. You're gonna be versing some of the best of the best in these tournaments sometimes. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's just it's that important. And when no. you have money on the line. Yep. When you have money on the line. <laughs> you're more focused and yep. you're thinking. You're you're thinking the most. You, this, yeah. you will never think as much playing a game for fun <laughs> when you're literally playing for money yeah you're always thinking about 100 percent how to win yeah so you're giving it your all like no that's the main yeah. reason why no 100 percent and man i should be playing tournament i cannot like uh, you know echo honey's like statement here before like you know before the ppg like win that i had in january man i played on luxury's like page like every day man i was spamming that day. yeah i was spamming it day. Like, I would play against some of the best. I played against Hani, actually, for, like, $100 before. Yeah, I, I lost that. Yep. But I played against, like, like Kamal. Like, I played against, like, Cody. I played against, like, some of the best, right? And I got, like, destroyed. But I learned so much from those those losses. And that's what you I want to, like, tell so you guys. Much. Yeah, like, you, you, I think you learn the most when you lose and when you play against really good players. Because the lines of plays that they do, man, is insane. Like, it's stuff that you've never seen or expect before. And so now, like, you incorporate that and what they do into your own play style, and then you slowly start to see, like, 
like you're outplaying your opponents all of a sudden like you know what i mean like you're just you're doing stuff that they don't expect and then they just get like super punished by it so i cannot echo that statement enough man i think an online tournament is a great way for you to you know take what you learn and then uh, and you know apply it right it's and it's really nice as well for example like the lcs three or if no four now it's coming up in two weeks so for i think you guys should sign up and set that as your goal right like in two weeks from now you know like the goal should be to top that lcs or even heck you know what let's go even higher let's win that lcs and see if you can accomplish that goal right because i think when you have a goal like that's super set you know set in stone like determines happening on that day for sure like you have something to like stride towards and so um yeah. i can't touch that enough either man yeah. and honestly the amount of work that you put in man it, it, yep. it, it's worth it sometimes just yeah it's not worth it money wise it's feeling wise you feel so good yeah after you do well in the tournament yeah you, honestly when you do well in the tournament you feel so good that you want to play another tournament That's yeah like, <laughs> i wish i wish everyone had that strive i hope yeah. everyone has that strive that's yeah. what i wish for for people yeah. to feel the same way like as soon as you get that top you're like damn man i i, I want that feeling yeah you want to top it. yeah man like, for sure for sure, for sure. Well, anyways, Hani, thank you so much, man, for coming on. I'm sure everyone who's watching is going to be super excited to, you know, hear your thoughts on, like, you know, this deck building process, like the theory behind, like, XYZ card choices and, you know, like, things that we can take away that, you know, strives, like, goes beyond just, like, the water deck, but just overall improvement as, like, you know, as a player. And so, without further ado, man, please comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, Um, you know, on Hani's take to deck building um you know as you saw like you know jesse's take now i wanted to introduce other like really strong players within the current meta game and Yu Gi Oh, and have their explain their process because everyone have different takes and i just want to get different perspective for you guys so that you can improve and like you know see which deck building style works best for you um but anyways guys um uh, thank you so much for the love and support and i'll see you guys in the next one peace